Hey guys, on today's episode of the podcast, you'll be meeting the Zendrop leadership team, finding out a little bit more about how we got connected to each other and why and how we work together and the future of Zendrop. Hope you enjoy. All right. Um, well, three, two, one, we're live. Um, welcome to the first ever podcast episode of, uh, of Zendrop. Got the core leadership team here. Just want to introduce everyone um, and kick it off. So I guess I can go ahead and, and start off. We'll, we'll go, um, we'll just give a brief background on ourselves, kind of introduce ourselves to our listeners um, and just give a brief story of how we got involved uh, working together. Uh, so my name is Brad Leffler, the COO of Zendrop. I, um, I've been longtime friends with Jared, who's the CEO, and we got started working together. It's almost three years ago at this point. Um, got involved with the whole dropshipping e-commerce um, scene, and Zendrop was just kind of uh, a birth out of um, out of that relationship, and just um, naturally came to be. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have, uh, too much to dive into on that, but, um, I guess Lucas, if you want to kick it off, kick it off next. Sure. So, uh, so yeah, my name is Lucas and I'm the CTO of, uh, Zendrop. I've known Jared as well for a very long time. Um, a bit of a background, like I used to study in Miami and, um, and then I just quit, uh, because it was not really exciting i was just learning english where you can just learn by just leaving so anyways i just quit and uh, i started to work and uh, obviously i was working illegally because i did not have a visa for it but then it did not go away so i was like you know what i'm done with america i'm just gonna go back to france i had too many issues and then i was like okay i have to go give away my apartment back and this is when i met jared through craigslist so he came to my apartment and he was like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to go back to friends. But then he said, oh, what are you doing in Miami? And then I showed him that I was doing design and stuff like that. And, uh, and that's how we met. And then we worked together for probably like a year or a year and a half, Jared. Yeah. <clears throat> so hold on. And that was like 10 years ago, right? Something like that. Yeah, it was a while ago, <laughs> a long time ago. Good time though. Uh, but anyways, yeah, we worked together on a um, foam party, anyway, stuff like that on the side. Jai and Mike dive into it. And then we lost track. Then I, I life went, went on. I went to Australia for about six, seven years, created a few business over there. And I mainly, um, mainly like created this business towards uh, technology. So I was developing mobile applications, software, and stuff like that. And one day, I was still following Jared on Instagram, but you know he was doing his thing. I was doing my thing. And uh, one day, I saw I saw Jared like posting a bunch of photos like about like being very successful media, and I was very curious. I'm like, whoa, 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 what the heck is going on? Because back back then, we had no money. Like I had zero money. Like we were living off bananas and cereals and stuff like that. So I was very curious to see like what happened. And then he explained me that he had he was very successful in e-commerce and stuff like that. And he offered me to catch up and fly to um, uh, Florida. I didn't I did not say Miami. I said Florida. <laughs> so uh, so anyways, and then anyways, we we, we catched up and he explained me. It's like I had this big vision about Zen Drop, and uh, I'm not really a person that gets very excited much. Like I've worked a lot with a lot of company. I used to work with Expedia and uh, like big corporation Atlassian, which is Jira and stuff like that. And uh, they work on, on project, but like, it's not as, ex it's, it's great, but it's not like, wow. But Jared somehow like made me realize that this project could be big. So I quit my other job. I sold my company and I flew to Florida to work on this, uh, on this platform, which took us about like a, over a year, I would say, to develop from start to finish. So we had to do the whole thing from start to finish. 
we had to design everything, like the, the whole floor from start to finish, the sign up, the, how the app is going to work, the admin portal as well, the system to track packaging, uh, the supplier side as well. So as you can imagine, it's a big project. Like we were pretty much building Amazon. It's a, it's a system where tons of transaction and orders uh, partially like partially ordered, like just, just partial orders. For, like anyways, it was very, very complex. So it took us about a year to develop. Uh, and now we are, now we're here and we're still like developing like amazing features and every single day, like uh, everything changes. So, and that's the beauty about this company. I think like Jam Drop took us a long time to develop, but it changes very quickly, um, which is which is amazing. Like for example, like we just had COVID, which no one expected, and we thought it would be like something that you know quick, something happened, it's gonna be fine after a week or two, it's gonna be great. But it wasn't. We did everything, we, like, uh, like it was absolutely insane. We did everything we can to provide the best solution to our users, like every single day, every single day. Like we work seven days a week. There is no nine to five like between us. It's literally seven days a week, every single day, nonstop. And COVID was really intense because we had a lot of issues uh, due to, obviously, you know, guys, why due to shipping which was not in our control, but we still like had to find ways to provide the best solution for our users. So it was a first for us, it was a first for our users as well, and it was a first for the world. So we did not expect anything, but we did our best. Uh, but anyways, hopefully it's gonna be over soon. Um, I guess I'm gonna just pass on to Jared uh, about um, how, yeah, like, when 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 this idea about Zendrop started, and also I guess where where it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. really really quick right before um, <clears throat> Jared gives the backstory. Um, I think it's an important point to to touch on uh, what, what you just said, Lucas. Um, how we had we had very little control over what what actually happened with the whole uh, COVID pandemic and the the logistics situation. Um, I think a lot of people might think that we're actually you know picking and packing shipments and and shipping them out but it's actually an important thing to touch on i think that we're we're not doing any of that we're simply offering a competitive marketplace and a, a software solution for people to be able to run and operate these drop shipping businesses and we want to offer um, the best solution we possibly can obviously um, with trusted suppliers and reliable uh, solutions. Um, sometimes things like this are not um, fully in our control. And it's something that obviously we want to rectify as quick as possible. We don't want to offer a bad experience, but it's not something that we're uh, necessarily directly a, um, a affecting, I guess you could say. So I just wanted to touch on that. Um, I think a lot of people, if I didn't know, if I wasn't, you know, part of this core team and I wasn't working for the company, and just using Zendrop, I might I might have thought the same thing. Um, I think it's 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 probably pretty easy to think um, or not not know exactly what what we're doing behind the scenes. Um, so just wanted to to clear that up um, and and just throw that out there that we're constantly looking for better options. Um, and we just want to offer the best experience possible. Yeah, I mean uh, that, I, that's very accurate. Yeah, that's a big reason why we're you know being open and doing podcasts and you know trying to get to know our community uh because we are working really hard and we do have a big vision to become you know a marketplace of uh thousands of suppliers and enable anyone in the world to sell any product in the world 100 percent yeah 100%. That, i mean what brad said is very accurate and like you said as well there's a lot of behind the scene that you guys don't see you guys see like a beautiful platform but behind that we are a very small team like this is literally the core team that you guys see right now we have three developers on the side as well so before covid we had like three developers with GOG is going to introduce himself after but we're a very very small team and we're working 24 7 literally to provide the best experience to you guys mm -hmm. so when we see like positive reviews it really touch us massively and we share them with the whole team and there's one thing that we realized during covid is that we 
we informed our users via email, but we realized it was not enough. We needed more like communication. We needed like really clear communication. So what we did is, even though COVID was very impacting our business, we hired another developer because we had so much work to, to do. We had another developer to work on a, on a feature to send push notification to you guys. So it took us about like a week and a half, two weeks to develop, but we realized that it was very important to develop this feature to provide instant notification to you guys so you guys are aware because we put ourselves into your shoes, guys. We were like, we were like, okay, if you're into a platform, you wanna know what's going on. You wanna be aware of like what's going on, you know? So we created this feature within two weeks to let you know, guys. And we're gonna keep improving the platform by providing uh, more clarity about what's going on, uh, better communication and podcast. Because I think it's important to have this clear clarity between us and Drop and our users. And, and to offer better logistics solutions. I mean, we started Zendrop with one supplier who we knew and trusted really well. Unfortunately, you know, they dropped the ball during the COVID-19 pandemic and um, we're trying to pivot away from being being vulnerable as fast as we possibly can. So that's that's our main focus right now. Also like a, a really, you know, there's a balance between getting a bunch of suppliers on and having people that we trust right? Because they're handing a lot of money. We're sending them a lot of money. You know, the main supplier that we were working with when we launched, you know, I personally have been to China five or six times now, and I've spent over a week with our partner out there. Um, and actually, I had a really bad experience when I first started drop shipping. Well, it was a good and a bad experience, right? Because it led to where we are now. Um, but when I first started drop shipping, things took off really fast. I'm sure a lot of you guys are listening, know the story. I built a store that went from zero to $2 million in its first 60 days. And, you know, I had VAs running all the support and doing all the order fulfillment. And I really automated the business, which was really cool and really made me passionate about the business model in itself. So it gave me a lot of freedom, really changed my life. Um, but one thing that happened that was uh, you know, a huge disruption Actually, I was, uh, I was traveling after a trip to China. I was in uh, Thailand and uh, three days before I had to fly back to the US, one of my virtual assistants DM or messaged me and said, hey, Jared, you know, we found uh, about 50 tracking numbers that aren't working. And in my head, I'm like, all right, well, it's 50 tracking numbers. We're doing about 2000 orders a day. I'm like, you figure it out. You know, I'm not gonna dive too deep into it yet. And then the next day I had two days left in Thailand. She lets me know that they found about 150 tracking numbers that aren't working. And I'm like, you know, 2000 orders a day, we've done 4,000 orders in the last two days. You found 150 tracking numbers that aren't working, like figure it out, you know, dig deeper into it. The last day before I left, uh, she informed me that they found 500 tracking numbers that weren't working. Now I'm like, you know, 500 tracking numbers, at an average order value of uh, $50 an order, we're talking, you know, $25,000 in potential refunds and, uh, you know, 500 bad customers that have a bad experience. So I was starting to worry a little bit about it. I got on my flight, I flew back to, to uh, Florida, and I one of the first things I did was I opened Skype just to see what was going on, right? Because I was, I was flying for 24 hours with no connectivity. And by the time I landed, they told me they had found like around a thousand to fifteen hundred tracking numbers that weren't working. And I'm like, okay, now this is becoming a big problem, right? That's that's a lot of money and a lot of upset customers. So at the time, this was probably about three and a half years ago. Um, I was fulfilling all my orders through Oberlo, and I was fulfilling it through their suppliers. So at least I knew that I had a, a reputable company that I can go to. I wasn't, it wasn't going through AliExpress luckily where I would have nothing. At least I knew that they were a big company. They were acquired by Shopify. They're not going to like totally screw me. Right? So I reached out to them and it took us about <clears throat> a week of running scripts and, you know, testing all the tracking numbers and figuring out what was going on to discover that their supplier actually sent us, 7,000 fake tracking numbers, meaning customers paid me for 7,000 orders, which was about 10,000 units of a product. I paid them for 7,000 orders. They sent me back 7,000 fake tracking numbers. Now, 
you can only imagine customers are sending in emails. My tracking number doesn't work. I went from getting about a hundred customer support emails a day to a thousand a day and try to hire like 10 virtual assistants. We had to refund, you know, a ton of people, uh, chargebacks went through the roof. Our Facebook page feed score went down. So although I did really well, zero to two, 2 million in 60 days, I also just got hit with this huge problem. And, you know, basically, I, long story short, I lost like $450,000 that week, which was uh, like, thank, thank God I had made more money than that over the last month. So I didn't lose everything I made, but I lost a lot of what I made. Um, but the point of this is like, you know, trusting suppliers is something that's really hard to do. They're all the way over there in China. And, you know, we're working on bringing suppliers in the U S and the platform as well, but it's really easy for people to deceive you over there because we don't know what, how it works. We don't know. I mean, we know how it works, but most people don't know how, how the tracking numbers work, what the shipping and logistics looks like, how the pricing is done, you know, when tracking numbers work, when they don't work, where they come from. So it's really easy for somebody around the world who may not be a good person to deceive and scam, you know, and, and, and rip people off. And that happened to me, which was a, a big reason why we wanted to start Zendrop in the first place. Cause it was like, okay, we need a, a reliable uh, fulfillment partner. But um, yeah, just feeding off Brad's point, um, you know, there's a balance between having a lot of suppliers and like just, you know, working with everyone who claims that they can do things well and working with the suppliers that we know we can trust. And right now, you know, when we're handling, you know, our plot, we've done over a half a million orders through Zendrop since we've launched it and we're handling a lot of money. So we need to trust these suppliers entirely, especially if it's with your money, with the users, people who are using our platform's money. So. 20%. And by the way, um, we've made a video. I don't know if you guys saw it on YouTube, but we've made a video as well because we went to China. I was with Brad and, and Jared as well. We went to China to see like how their system works because we really care about what we do. We really care about Zendrop. So we went there, we flew there to see how their system works, meet them, meet the team, meet who we actually deal with, talk to, and how the system works. And we created a, uh, a video as well to show you guys how the process works. So I'm gonna link the video into the description as well. Awesome, that's a great idea. Um, maybe I'll just wrap up with myself and you know how we all met, and then I'll pass it off to Gio or Chris to introduce themselves. Um, so yeah, I think I've known Brad the longest out of everyone here. Brad and I went to, you know, we were like, we were rivals in baseball back when we were like little kids. And then we, we met each other in high school and we were like part of, you know, our, our best friend group. There's like four of us. Uh, and after high school, we went our separate ways. Brad went to play golf at Clemson and did, you know, his thing there. I went up to school in uh, Albany, New York. And I got into the entrepreneurship space like pretty young. I started throwing concerts. Uh, and uh, basically, Brad and I reconnected. Uh, well, I mean, we've been, in, we've been connected and friends all the time, but we reconnected on a, on a deeper level and got involved with business uh, about three and a half years ago um, when I was actually selling Ecom Hacks Academy, which was the coaching program and course that we had going on before Zendrop. Uh, and Brad was one of those people that, really Brad is, is one of the people that I think cares the most about a customer experience. Like that's number one on his list, which is why I think he was doing such a good job leading the support team. Um, but right when he saw what we were doing, he started out in sales, but he realized that there was a lot more um, that could be done in the Facebook group and answering people and making things more efficient. And uh, Brad actually, you know, took a pay cut to not do sales and, and, and work to uh, increase the experience for Ecom Hacks Academy, which kind of led to where he is now. So I've known Brad the longest. Uh, Lucas mentioned earlier, we met on Craigslist. Uh, <laughs> when I was uh, throwing my, my concerts, I had a company called Electric Flurry. You guys could look it up on YouTube. It was a really cool company. Uh, <laughs> my business partner, we moved to Miami and we were pretty broke at that point. And we were doing all right, but like we were just getting by. <laughs> uh, we found just enough to survive. 
Yeah, we found Lucas on Craigslist. He was like subleasing his apartment for like 1100 bucks a month. And, uh, and Lucas is the guy, he's like so friendly. that He's like, yeah, like I'm leaving in, in four or five days. But if you guys want to just crash here while I'm here, that's fine. So me and my business partner at the time, we like bought blow up mattresses. It was a studio apartment. We had like three blow up mattresses on the floor. You know, living in South Beach, like having fun, but like eating peanut butter <laughs> sandwiches and like cereal, you know, just getting by. And, uh, yeah, Lucas was an incredible designer. So we're like, all right, well, you know, if you do our design work, pay your rent and then we'll like figure it out from there. So we just basically, you know, Lucas joined my old team and we've had a crazy long journey from there, living everywhere from Washington, D.C. to Buffalo, New York and back and forth and everything in between. So I've known Lucas the second longest. Actually, no, I think Chris. The two. No, I've known Chris longer than I've known Lucas. Yeah. Yeah college Chris was like uh Chris wasn't as much of a stud as he is now you know he was <laughs> a nerdy accounting student in Albany uh, but he was a good guy I didn't know him too well up until you know up until maybe like four years ago or so when we connected yeah him. which is which is funny we we had a lot of mutual friends but we just never really we didn't really cross paths that much in Albany um which is funny now because we're so close you know yeah yeah, we, we got connected through a mutual friend. And this is right when I got into like the e-commerce space. And Chris was like, working at Ernest & Young. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I've been through like eight accountants. And like, it's really hard to find a good team. By the way, like, if you're watching this, and, and you're, uh, you'll get new in business, you're gonna find that like, it like just in anything, like you need to try 10 things before one thing works, even with hiring people. So I've been through like eight accountants. And they weren't diligent. They didn't care about my business. And then uh, I started working with Chris and he was just extremely diligent and we got along. And it's like, once you find someone like that, it's like, you know, we got to work together for life or else I got to go try to work with 10 more people to find another person that I like. So. I think this is the thing that I love the most about us is that we all know each other from a, from, from a long time ago and we're all on the same, like, energy level. We all like believe in Zendrop. We all have fun literally every single day. And this is why we work 24 seven because we really enjoy what we do and we have fun because we're all like friends and you know, doing what we love. Yeah. And, and I think like a totally side topic, but like we named the platform Zen drop, like we're all really into mindfulness and meditation and exercising, especially geo. I think geo might be the most woke one out of all of us. <laughs> geo is the, is the one here. Yeah. Feels like a geo is basically Buddha. Gio's a <laughs> modern Buddha. He's a Zen master for sure. One day, one, one day is definitely one day is gonna be gone. Yet, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Meditate with Buddha every day. <laughs> you want to you want to introduce yourself and how you became part of the team and your background? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, hey guys, my name is Gio. I'm the I'm the head of development here at Zendrop. Um, so, you know, I have a bunch of experience like developing, I've been making websites for, you know, six, seven years now, just working at a different places. Um, and I also worked on a bunch of startups in the past. And before Zendrop, I was actually in the Bay Area, um, working as a software engineer over there, but I was pretty bored. <laughs> so um, one day, one day I'm on Facebook and I saw an ad by Jared. <laughs> on Facebook, he was like flexing like Nexus, a Lambo back in the day or something like that. And I was like, I was like, this guy looks crazy. I got to check him out. Um, so yeah, I basically did a bunch of like background research on Jared, um, watched his like interviews and stuff. And he was talking about like how he also meditates and he was, you know, I really just love his mindset. Um, so I just, I just like felt like, you know, it'd be something I'd get along with pretty well and I'd love to work with. So I just reached out to him out of the blue. I sent him an email, um, you know, just introduced myself and stuff. And his uh, Mariah got back to me, <laughs> Jared's uh, ex-executive assistant. And she was like, yeah, he, he would like to get on the phone with you. So, yeah, we just started talking and then I flew out to – um, Boca Raton, visit the team. I love the team. I mean, everybody was like, just so, 
you know, we're like, we're all like super young, but also like super focused on like self-improvement um, and just constantly being the absolute per like perfect version of ourselves and pushing ourselves every single day to like learn as much as possible and execute as much as possible and like just build the most beautiful stuff. Um, so yeah, I just, I just love the team and, you know, it just, just worked out. I've been working with them ever since. You just got to go with the flow, man. That's the thing. Yeah, just go with the flow and the energy will just push you where you need to be. This is literally how we all got together, I think. So, yeah, like the same, like when you came to Boca Raton, I just knew I, I had like one or two questions for you, you know, like, like, oh, what's your background and, uh, and what's the technology you know about, you know, coding and stuff like that. But this is, this is not how we really do an interview. We just, it's purely based on vibe and the energy. And the first time you came to Boca, I tried right the, the, the day after. It's like, yo, what, what do you think about G? I'm like, yep. Yeah, is good yeah. done and since then since then guys you have no idea like how many times do you like put up like put what's the saying again about, about the fire like put down fire whatever put up fire put out the fire put, put out the fire thank you <laughs> how many times Gio? i was like okay Gio, are you available and it's like almost 11 p.m and he's just grinding fixing the issue for you guys and and then the website w was fixed. Like it's, that's what I like about our team. Like we're so flexible and we're so passionate about what we do. It's, it's amazing. Yep. It's, and it's very, I think, I think you had it, you talked about that Jared, but it's very hard to find the right team uh, that you can work with. Like it's, it's, it's easy to find someone that is excited, you know, like you get someone excited for the first week and then it fades off super fast. With our team, it's the same as they want. We just grind every day and have fun and, and, and trust me, guys, we're going to build an amazing platform, but I'm guessing uh, Joe is going to go on and then Chris, and then I guess, Joe, you can talk about the, uh, the future about Zendrop because I think it's super exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know uh, if you're listening to this. I'm not sure if, um, from a user's perspective, uh, if I was a user, I'd be aware of this or not, but we're pushing out like new features and stuff almost on a daily basis. So like every single day, um, we're improving the platform. You know, like if you, if you ever see a bug or anything like on a day, you know, it's, it's good, probably going to be fixed like within like the next hour or two or next day, like latest. So the platform is constantly improving. Like every single day is an adventure, you know, just it's a, it's a nonstop, um, mm -hmm process of like just perfection everything um and improving your experience as much as possible i mean that's that's our that's why we started this thing 100 percent. yeah we like like i said before like we're a small team so whenever like you guys reach out to our support team we are aware of what's going on and whenever you reach out to our, our support team and you report an issue a bug it goes directly through me and then i have a chat with geo and our development team and then we fix it as soon as possible so it's a very like quick loop. Yeah, whenever there's a bug, technically the next hour, the next day max, it will be fixed. Yeah. Which is great because if you actually look at bigger company, it takes weeks, even months. I'm pretty sure like a few days ago, Brad had an issue and they responded to you like what, a month later or whatever? <laughs> well, I reached, out to, which is I reached out to Zoom like, th no, it was actually like three months ago. I reached out to them because like <laughs> I redirected a, a link to my meeting ID and like some, some people couldn't join it. It was like a very simple, like, you know, very simple support ticket. And they responded to me like two days ago, which is like three months later, but it's also understandable <laughs> because like everyone in the world started using zoom like three months ago. So I'll cut them a little bit of slack. They probably got hundreds of thousands if not millions of support tickets over the last three months <laughs> Hold so on, I actually, cut yeah. slack. true so, true chris you wanna you wanna jump in yeah yeah i didn't want to interrupt you guys there um anyways i'm i'm chris i'm the cfo here at zendrop um uh like jared was saying we went to college together so we go back i remember jared back when we were like 18 years old um, like I said, you know, we had a lot of mutual friends. We just never really hung out in college, which is interesting because now we're, we're so close. Um, 
but yeah, my, my path was very different than these guys. I, uh, I did the college thing. Like Jared said, I studied hard, spent a lot of time. I had, I had fun in college, but um, really focused on getting good grades and stuff. Did the whole corporate America, climb the corporate ladder, did all of that. Um, wasn't a terrible experience. I loved what I did. I, I worked at Ernst & Young and um, it was a great job. Um, I worked a lot of hours, worked on a lot of really cool things. Um, you know, did tax and accounting work for Fortune 500 companies, which was really, really interesting. Um, towards the end of that, I started uh, doing some freelance work. I was doing, you know, accounting and taxes. And uh, Jared, uh, I, I ran into Jared at a party. Um, this must have been back in like, I want to say it was either Christmas 26, I think it was Christmas 2016, like the holiday season around that time. And I uh, ran into Jared at a party and he literally, like we hadn't seen each other in years. And he was literally like, hey, do you do any uh, accounting and tax work? I just fired my accountant last week. And like, that was, that was how we started working together. It kind of grew from there. Um, it was a roller coaster because literally within the first three to four months of working together, he launched that store that obviously Jared is now well known for the uh, the gadget snob, the zero to two million dollars um, in two months, and uh, I, I was along for the ride there. And Jared, I guess I can safely share this now. He's my first ecom client, and uh, and and he just kept growing, and I kept growing with him. And then uh, one day Jared flew to New York, and we met up for dinner, and he. Uh, he was telling me about this vision he had, this, this, uh, how he wanted to grow this business and he wanted me to be a part of his team. And um, to be completely honest, I thought at first he approached me about joining his team for the info business, which I mean, it was, Jared was killing it. He was doing a great job and had a great product and it was really, really cool. It just, I, I wasn't that interested, um, but he didn't approach me about that. It was about this Zendrop vision or back then it was was Silk Road. It was called something else. And he was telling me um, how he's putting this team together and it was all about having the right team. And I had known Brad by then. I didn't meet Lucas yet at the time, but um, he told me that he wanted to grow this really large business and he was getting interest from venture capital firms. And um, I was sold. I was, I was entirely sold. I, you know, we literally uh, within two weeks put together an agreement and I was moving to Florida about six weeks later, which is looking back now, I mean, it seems back then it was so crazy for me, but um, honestly, one of the best things I ever did, you know, I, I went from, you know, doing the whole corporate America thing in New York um, and having fun up there and uh, traded that in for some fun in the sun here in Florida. I'll, I'll and, never, uh, yeah. This first walked into the office, you know, we were all wearing stuff like this t-shirt and like, hats and you know whatever basketball shorts and chris walked in with like button up shirt and like loafers <laughs> yeah it was it was a huge adjustment for me i i literally went from um i mean at ernst and young the jeans day you would have to wear a dress shirt tucked into your jeans so everyone <laughs> was dressed like a, a casual dad like you know like a <laughs> mid 50 year old dad like he's you know, got his shirt tucked in his jeans like that's that was Jeans Day at Ernst & Young. So I go to, <laughs> I start working with you guys and everyone's in like flip-flops and shorts and Lucas. backwards hat. <laughs> Lucas doesn't even wear shoes. Yeah, no way. way. I'm not I, I am not wearing your shoes. <laughs> I actually almost went down the same path that you did, Chris. When I started working with Jared, like we, we had like tried stuff in the past and I tried a bunch of shit and, you know, there's a bunch of failures, right? That we like, you know, I remember one time we we were like, I helped you out with that car washing business that you're starting. Like, there's a whole bunch of like random shit that we've done. Uh, but when we when we actually started working on something like that actually worked, which is like three three and a half years ago at this point, I was like about to go down. I know I didn't give a lot of background on myself um, originally. I was like about to go down the same exact path that you went down, Chris. It's not a bad path, you know. Um, it's 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 respectable it's like it's it's you know there's a lot of security it's a it's a good it's a good thing to do but i definitely it's definitely not for me and i was just kind of doing it because it was i didn't really have much direction i was trying to figure shit out and i i eventually like you know i tried to play golf professionally after playing college and then 
I went back up to live in New York and go back to school there because I was going to get in-state tuition and I got into a pretty good school and I just, I, I wasn't happy. Um, I, I just wasn't, it, I knew deep down it like wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, and linked up with Jared on a, on a random trip. It wasn't, I wasn't intending to, to go into any sort of like enter any sort of business relationship at all but uh, saw he was crushing it. And I, I think I actually might've been the first person to ever have access to Ecomax Academy, like the actual content of the course. And I took the content of the course, which was meant to build a drop shipping store. And I actually just got into running um, Facebook ads for like local businesses. I was like, why don't I just take these skills like that I've learned from, from this? And I don't even think I've told you anything about this really Jared or anyone else but like I was I was like going to dentist's office and chiropractor's office and like pitching them services I was like I can get you for sure like double the amount of leads you're getting right now whatever marketing strategies you guys are using don't pay me for the first month I guarantee you I'll get you more customers for the same amount of of budget that you're um that you're that you're getting right now and got a couple clients and was like I don't think I really want to go to school anymore um, this is like, I'm not passionate about it. Um, I'm spending money. I'm not making any money and like making money through digital marketing is fairly easy. Uh, especially like Facebook ads th four years ago was like throwing a bunch of darts at a massive dartboard with a huge bullseye. Like CPMs were like 20 cents and it was just like literally make one stupid piece of creative with a like a, a geo tag that was like five mile radius of this location and like it would convert. So uh, started doing that and then started a couple of drop shipping stores and, and linked up like full time, which I dropped out of school and um, and here we are. Fun, funny story about my, my transition, just to jump back to that corporate America thing. Cause this is a funny thing that I, I shared with my nerdy accounting friends. Um, just to show like the huge switch in the, in the dynamic of like how my life changed was when, I, whenever, when I was at Ernst Young, obviously it's an accounting firm. I work on something. Let's say I, I calculate a number. It just goes through an army of layers of review, right? If your staff level, you put together a calculation then the senior looks at it, the manager looks at it and you know, it shoots up the ladder and then it goes out to the client. My, my first, it was like, must've been my first week working with Jared and you guys, uh, we had an issue with a supplier and we were calculating a number and I was so accustomed to that mindset. And I remember being in a meeting, I think it was with Jared and someone's on the phone and I'm pretty sure you were there too, Brad. And he just, it was like 50, I calculated $50,000 adjustment and Jared was like, okay, great. Uh, all right, great. Um, let's send that email out. Let's do this $50,000 adjustment. And in my mind, I was like, holy shit. Like, uh, I, maybe we should go through the layers of review and like it was just like a huge huge adjustment yeah. just a funny story but yeah um, there are yeah that's uh but, that, but you are you are running, the layer of, of of review that's you exactly but but that's really the point i'm trying to make is what what was cool touching on your point brad with the whole corporate america like how how different it is um my my thing was um, when you're working at corporate America, it's like you have people telling you what to do. And it's it's not just a corporate America thing. It's just a lot of jobs out there. You know, you have a boss or telling you what to do. And then one thing working with you guys and with Jared and like this company all together, it's very much like you have a list of things to do. You're empowering yourself. And if you don't do it, no one's going to do it. That's just the reality. I mean, that's just working with a startup company it's like yeah i came in as an accountant but now you're talking to like the in-house legal counsel in-house hr payroll taxes account you know so and we, we're all like that we all are juggling a lot of different things to, to kind of build and this company as the you know the ceo and founder like i it's cool because i never have to feel like i have to push anyone it's like everyone is passionate about what they're doing and we all know that if we execute what we want to execute with Zendrop, we can make a big difference in the world. You know, our vision goes far beyond what you guys see on the platform now. 
You know, our vision is to enable anyone in the world to sell anything in the world. You know, if you want to log in and sell, you know, Nike shoes, we want to enable that. Not that everyone's going to be able to do that, but you can go apply. A company will approve you to sell their products. Now you're connected. You could message suppliers directly on the platform and you can sell anything. And this also gives distribution from all these brands and products to potential potentially millions of online stores. So, you know, one thing about our team that's really cool is that we all understand the big vision. It's not like we all think we're doing different things. We're very in line with what we're doing. We know it's going to take phases to get there. We know we have to start with Chinese dropship products because frankly, that's really what everyone's selling right now. And that's what's going to drive our business and give us enough revenue to continue to hire smarter people and grow and offer better solutions. And we know that we're going through phases to get to where we want to go. But anyone who's watching this, anyone who's listening to this, um, we would love to hear your feedback. We'd love to hear what you, what you want to know from us. Uh, we're going to start to be uh, you know, more out there, uh, a little bit less behind the scenes. And we want to get to know you guys better. So, Brad, I don't know if you want uh, anything else. Yeah. Well, I just on top, on Chris's point, like just to touch on that, I, you know, no one's sitting here making us do anything, uh, but we really care and, and want to make the best possible product we could make. And it also, you know, this, this opportunity has created so much freedom in my life. Uh, I have the opportunity to work from wherever I want, whenever I want, you know, I spent a few months in Asia last year, just cause I wanted to, cause I didn't like the, the place I was living in. Um, and I just wanted to experience that. And you know, it's kind of like no one's sitting there telling you what to do, but you're so entrenched in it that you know what needs to be done. And you're sort of just like, you know, you're, you owe it to the freedom that the opportunity has given you to get the things done that you need to get done with as much care and attention to detail as you can possibly. It's, it's sort of like this, this free market of freedom almost where like, if you don't give it what it deserves, you're going to lose that freedom. Um, and I, 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 it's, it's like the most important thing in my life. Um, I, I can, I can make my own schedule, you know, like Jared said, as long as the stuff's getting done, no one's, no one's going to sit there and, you know, and, and micromanage you. Um, so yeah, I mean, I like to take a break at like one, two, three o'clock every day, take a nice like break, go to the gym, um, get my mind right, eat, and then, you know, I'm back working again later at night. Um, but, you know, it's something where if you were in corporate America, maybe you, you wouldn't be able to do. So that's that's also a huge thing for me. You're actually more productive doing that, Jay, because... For sure. I mean, I, I'm, I work the same the same way as Brad. Like, this is something that we worked, that we saw that works. Like, we just get you done in the morning. We have a big break of like two or three hours during the day. And then we get you done at night again because there's less distractions, it's dark, and you can really focus. And we produce a, a lot more work as a small team because we all work like that instead of like doing that nine to five work. Yeah, the, the, uh, the world is changing and you know, you have to, you, adapt to adapt. Along with, you have to adapt along with it. Those rules of, you know, you need to work nine to five and the, they're archaic rules made from before the internet even existed. I mean, it's just like, it's just something that doesn't make much sense anymore. You're just, you're definitely, in my opinion, more productive working whenever you're most productive. We have exactly. 100%. more information, more organization and ability to transfer that information across different mediums where the information doesn't get lost. Whereas, you know, 40 years ago or 50 years ago or a hundred years ago when these types of rules were made, you had to be in the same room, the same building to be able to communicate things effectively. Now, you know, I could work at 7 a.m. when my brain's working sharp, leave something for someone who could pick it up at 10 a.m. when they're ready to do it. Nothing gets locked. In so, you know, we kind of, we're all very well read. You know, we're all, we all are, are spiritual people. Uh, and we understand that there's no point in doing anything if it doesn't make you happy. That doesn't mean we don't want to work hard by any means. 
Like working hard is very fulfilling, but we know that if we're not all lifting each other up, if our lives are not all getting better, there's no point in doing it. And, uh, you know, for us and for, for everyone who uses our platform as well, you know, it enables people to build businesses. That come from that region as well. Yeah. So if you have a good system, like Jared said, if nothing's, if nothing's getting lost, you know, if nothing's slipping through the cracks, it's really the, the best way to do it. And, you know, is to, is to have everyone do whatever they feel most comfortable with the most productive. And yeah, I would just keep that in mind if you're listening to this and maybe you're just going to kind of getting started in, in the business world or whatever you're getting started in. Um, listen to yourself. The, the, the person who knows you the best is, is you, you know, when you're too tired to do something, when you, when you might be forcing it um, and, and just stay true to yourself and, and um, you know the best, you know the best way for yourself. Yeah. And, and, remember, and remember you're unique as well. Yeah. You're unique, which means that something might work for you, might not work for, for someone else. So you got to try and see and find what works the best. For example, um, I know that Jared is a morning person. He loves to work in the morning. That's when his mind is very sharp. I am more like a night person, the same as Brad. We get you on the best at night. And the corporate world is really bad for that. Everyone comes at the same time, but it doesn't work like that anymore. Like, like, like Brad said, this is, this is what it used to be, but now it changed, but the system did not change. The system is very archaic. And this is what I love the most about our team. We are so open-minded and we care about each other. If you're not happy about where you are, what, what you're doing or whatever, let's change it. Like we, with Gio, for example, we do a stand up a weekly meeting with uh, the whole team, the development team, to see uh, like how we did this week, what we're gonna do next week, and also see if there's any blocker, what can we improve? Like we deeply care about like, we deeply care about our team. And obviously if we care about our team, we care about our users as well. Yeah, and you know, we're also big believers that like, it's not, like a lot of people that are just getting started, like, you know, they, they equate success with like stress and grinding. Like the more stress and grind I do, the more success I'll have. Because a lot of the media that you consume, you know, the Grant Cardone, like 10X, work harder, blah, 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 like gets in people's heads and they think that they have to be stressed with money and do well. When I believe that the opposite is true. You know, like for me personally, like, and I'm, I'm nowhere near where I want to be one day, right? But where, what I've gotten so far has come from focusing 70% of my energy on my mindset and the other 30% of my energy on what to do. Because if you don't have a good mindset and you're just consistently thinking about what to do, you're going to be scattered. You're not going to get things done right. Your interactions with people won't be good interactions. You know, people won't like you. You'll have bad energy. You won't you won't make any progress you'll get more frustrated and then it's a big cycle of getting nowhere but if you can focus on your mindset you know if you can put a good routine in place or you can work when you want to work you know or you can read something good in the morning or exercise do things that you know makes you feel well and then once you feel well if you can visualize what you actually want to accomplish and when i say visualize i mean like crystallize it like really envision it don't just like think about it for a second like think about it for like 10 minutes right once you can get in that mindset, all the thoughts you need to get to where you want to go, they, they start coming to you naturally as opposed to you trying to force it. When those thoughts start coming to you naturally, you get inspired. Your interactions with people are at a higher level. People like you more. People want to do business with you more. And things start to flow. And then that cycle starts. So a lot of times people get in that other cycle that I was talking about where it's just frustration leads to more frustration and no progress. But if you can focus more on your mindset and your visualization, which allows the thoughts to come to you, and you can get in that cycle, that's for me personally where I've seen the most growth. And it's cool because I think everyone here has an inherent uh, understanding and knowledge of this stuff. But the majority of people out there just getting started don't really have that kind of knowledge. And a lot of the stuff you're watching and consuming kind of pushes you in the wrong direction. So just be conscious that a lot of your effort and energy needs to go into your mindset and needs to go into the routine that you need to get yourself in that proper space. 
Yeah, for sure. I also think like the number one thing I think that I, I knew five years ago that I know now that would really help me is you just got to keep moving. If you're thinking about making the perfect move or you're trying to line something up before you actually start something and take action, I think it's the worst thing you could possibly do because the thing you set out to do and try to do and put all your energy towards to do is almost guaranteed to not even be close to what you actually end up doing. There's going to be things that happen along the way that shift you into doing something else might open up a new opportunity. But if you were considering starting or just kind of like, you know, in that paralysis analysis kind of mode where you're trying to get everything perfect before you start, that's like the worst thing you could possibly do. Cause now you're stagnant. Now you're not moving. Things are not presenting themselves to you um, and that you might be able to take advantage of. And again, you're stagnant. You're, you know, you're taking zero action. You're not, you're not learning anything. You're not, you're not progressing. So that's, I mean, if I have one piece of advice, it would just be keep moving because opportunities are going to present themselves that you didn't even think would be possible or would potentially present themselves. And I, I'm doing something three years, you know, three years ago, if you told me that I was going to be doing this, I'd have probably laughed at you, right? It's not, it's not what I set out to do. Um, but it just felt right. It felt right to, to link up with Jared again and, and what he was doing felt right. Um, and I just trusted the process and kept moving. And here we are. Um, I, I would, I would have never thought that I'd be here three years later. So what's just going to, what's just going to go with the flow. Yeah. I Sorry, was going to say what's interesting with what you said, Brad is very true is a lot of people get caught up in the whole, I got to make sure it's perfectly planned out and do exactly what I plan. But the reality is, um, when you, what your expectations are of things and what actually happens are often drastically different. What's important to understand is it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you can plan something out and you think that if I do X plus Y, it's going to, you know, Z is going to happen. One plus two equals three, but oftentimes it doesn't happen that way. It's what you expect it to happen is drastically different. And people fear that often. And the reality is, when something unexpected happens, a lot of times it's not a bad thing, you know, which is, which I find interesting. I would, I would argue that uh, it's uh, we like, actually, like you're, you're, you're wired to expect the worst case scenario because we have prehistoric brains and minds to try to protect ourselves. Just the evolution. So often we're like, our expectations are like, we're always thinking that the worst thing's going to happen. And like what Chris said, almost nothing happens as you expect it to. And then the outcome is almost, for me, it's almost always been better than I could have imagined it to be when I look back. So, you know, and it's not something that you can take and like apply to your life necessarily, but it is something that you could realize and, uh, and become more familiar with. I would I say people, that, that what people need to so it'd be yeah. right. <laughs> uh, mine is a very quick one. I think it's uh, what people need to do is just take everything and a, like everything that comes to you as a positive thing. I know some people think that failure is bad, but failure is great. It's, it's just, you, you got to try things and see what works. And I think like what we have as a team that is beautiful is that we always think positively, whatever happened, we just like, it's, it comes to us, we embrace it take the positive out of it and just keep moving forward. Yeah. If we hit a, if we see a wall, we just climb it and just keep going. Go ahead, Brad. Yeah. Sorry. I uh, know. All good. I, I was, I was just going to pile on top of what Jared said. Um, he said it's often better than you could have ever imagined. Um, I think that one piece of it kind of sums it all up. Cause like you can't actually physically think or m mentally think of the what's actually going to happen right you have like you have a you have a you have an end goal you have an objective to what, or whatever your goal is be successful do x y and z um but what happens is you actually you wind up manifesting something else just by having positive energy and and, and action so it's like it, it's usually something that was completely not even on your radar that you 
wouldn't even have been capable of thinking of if you hadn't taken all these other steps that led you to this point. Yeah, I guess the moral of the story, because we can go on with this stuff for freaking hours. <laughs> Forever. Is focus on being happy and don't worry about what's going to happen so much. And then better shit than what you would have expected will happen. Right? And then just keep being happy. Like, and listen focus, to yourself. Focus on, I say this all the time, like in the group coaching program, I talk about this all the time. Focus less on what you need to do. Because a lot of people that are, I'm going to sum this up real quick. A lot of people that are trying to get somewhere every day, they're like, what do I need to do to get there? What actions do I need to take? And they get stressed out. But what I think you need to do is you need to focus more on who do you need to be? What type of person do you need to be to achieve what you want to achieve? Do you need to be more compassionate? Do you need to be more loving? You know, do you need to be more humorous? Do you need to be more charismatic? Do you need to be more of an analytical thinker? You know, do you need to be more disciplined? And focus on the person that you need to be to get to where you want to be more so than the steps you need to take. Because the steps are going to all be jumbled anyway and you're going to end up in a different place than you expect but if you can focus on who you need to be you'll end up in that place a lot uh smoother and easier so anyway guys uh yeah. all right should we just quickly wrap up with uh sharing um the vision of syndrome like where we're heading sure you want me to to uh to do that yeah yeah you just, <laughs> yeah yeah, I think you touched on it earlier, but um, yeah, we could wrap up with that. For sure. So, you know, again, a lot of, a lot of our users and, and we haven't really been, uh, we've been very behind the scenes and we've been very uh, small with our messaging just because we've been so focused on continuing to make the machine work well. Um, but where we are is, you know, Zendrop is not a supplier. We're, we are not the supplier. Zendrop is, you know, we are a software solution and we're a double-sided marketplace. So what Zendrop will become and what it's in the process of becoming is a place where if you're a person who has a brand and you sell your product on Amazon, on eBay, on walmart.com, on jet.com, on Google shopping, you're going to also list your product on Zendrop and listing your product on Zendrop is a whole new marketplace that can get you distribution amongst hundreds of thousands, if not millions of stores, which a lot of people listening right now are the store owners that will be able to sell these products. So what we're doing is we're creating a place between wholesale and retail, right? We're creating a place where store owners can sell one at a time and these brands can ship directly to the consumers and these brands can get distribution they never would have had before if they just sold on Amazon and their own websites. Now they can sell on hundreds of thousands of sites that are spending their own money on ads to sell these products. And the websites and the users, the sellers, now have access to sell high quality products, branded products, trusted products, and sell whatever they want. We're trying to create something that, actually I tried to create a store about a year and a half ago called thefishingshop.com and I did everything right. I partnered with a huge fishing influencer. I went to a fishing trade show, we got, we went to 50 of the biggest fishing brands and we agreed, we got them all to agree to drop ship for our website. We can sell their products and they'll ship it out to our customers. What we quickly found out after making some sales is that communicating with 50 plus suppliers who have thousands of SKUs each and having shipments and tracking information and customers asking questions and waiting for these brands to answer and give us all the information we need to get to the customers, it was impossible. What Zendrop is going to do is going to enable more businesses to create the fishing shop.com or to create online department stores or to sell more SKUs and more products. Because now, you know, we get those 50 brands on Zendrop and the fishing shop.com connects to Zendrop, adds all those products to their stores. All the brands just get the orders every day and all the information comes through us. We're enabling commerce that never would have happened before. So that's our big vision. That's where we're heading. And uh, we're, we're excited to be able to be open about it and be vulnerable and have you guys hear what we're doing. Actually, yeah. like, since you said that we want to be open, I know, I know, I mean, we did not plan anything on this podcast. We just decided to do a podcast because we wanted to be more open to our users and stuff like that. But Brad, do you want me to share my screen so I can just share 
like the design that we're working on for the marketplace. Sure. Yeah. It's so a little, it's a small surprise. Um, yeah. In the, uh, in the interim, I guess between now and, you know, us realizing this big vision that we have, uh, we realized that we need to offer you guys the best solution we can possibly offer you for Chinese drop shipping. Um, again, like Jared said, we're trying to get uh, more suppliers in the U.S. and U.S. fulfillment started also. But um, we realized that we need to offer the best solution we could possibly offer for the business model that you guys are currently using right now. Um, so it's a big effort on our part to, to go ahead and make sure that we can onboard more reliable, trusted suppliers that have really quick shipping times, competitive pricing, and just be able to offer you the best option possible. So um, Lucas is quickly just gonna share um, the design. Um, and keep in mind that I think a lot of people won't actually be watching this, they'll be listening to it. So uh, try to give them some, some audio cues too, if you can. All right, sweet. But yeah, anyways, that was not the plan, but I was like, you know what? We may as well just share a little bit like the what's going on behind the scenes and what you guys expect. But uh, we are switching towards the marketplace be based as well on our users' feedback. And a lot of, a lot of those issues that the, our users report is because uh, a lot of information on Zendrop was not clear enough. For example, like comparing like suppliers and products like that. So we're changing everything for you guys. So uh, right, this is just a simple design that we did. Uh, Nothing's in production and we should start working on it probably in about two weeks. Uh, but we're gonna have a um, supplier profile where you can see like the supply information, the shipping line that they use, if they uh, offer the thank you card, which is the branding. Uh, we're gonna have also as well real life data. Since now that we have like, we added a new feature, a new technology that you guys obviously don't see, but we have that in the back end of the platform where we see all the tracking information so we can estimate how long it takes for a product to be shipped. So now we're gonna use real life data to provide you the exact amount of days a product has been shipped to USA, uh, international. We actually discussed that we're gonna have the main, uh, the main countries, which yeah, is we'll, we'll offer, Canada, uh, yeah, we'll offer the average shipping times to the US, Canada, Australia, and the UK, and then the rest of the of the international countries will be one category. Exactly. So I need to work on the design and update that, and then uh, we're going to go to production. But we're going to have pretty much the, the supplier portal, and I'm going to share one more design for you guys as well, which is going to be the new uh, design for the product page. So on the product page, you're going to have similar information, the product name information, but now you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna be able to compare suppliers. So this is a big thing that our users wanted to see. They wanted to compare a product with, between different suppliers. So you're gonna be able to compare uh, those two suppliers, for example, we're gonna have, if we have more suppliers, you can switch and flip between them, uh, but a cleaner um, page, and we're always, always gonna also showcase the cheapest supplier for you guys. This might change in the future because we also want to provide the faster shipping for you guys. So, uh, but anyways, this is pretty much how the page is gonna look like. You're gonna have the suppliers, you're gonna be able to change and look at each variant and add the product to your page. So this is a start. This is, uh, this is a really good start to our marketplace. We have a lot more coming up as well, guys. Uh, but that, anyways, I just wanted to share that with you. I know it was not part of the podcast, guys, uh, but I think it's important, like we said, to be um, transparent to our users. Yeah, and 100%. Some, something as well that I wanted to share with you guys is that every single feedback that you guys provide get passed on to us. Like it doesn't doesn't get lost. I know, like I know you guys might think because I I think the same. Whenever I see a beautiful website, I instantly imagine that it's a big company. You know, with like thousands of, of um, employees and whenever you say, whenever you message them it get lost it they don't really care but we do we are a small team so whenever you provide a feedback we actually do care we're a very small team and we created this platform for you guys so uh, the more feedback you provide the better the platform is going to get yeah it's it's the most important thing it's the most valuable thing to us is is your feedback so um, hit us up in the comments on YouTube. 
You can tweet us. Um, did we get the Zendrop handle, Lucas? Are we at Zendrop? Uh, sorry, say again? On, on Twitter. The anchor? Did we get the, ha the handle? Uh, no, I need to get it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> hope By the time you're listening to this, we'll have it. Hopefully, would, yeah, you'll be I, able to tweet us at, at Zendrop um, <laughs> or, you know, hit us, hit our support team up and um, we'll figure out the social channels here um, for the next podcast. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thanks for, thanks for hopping on, everyone. Uh, appreciate it. See ya. See you guys. See ya. See you guys. All right, episode's over. Really hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Please uh, like, comment, subscribe, leave us a review uh, on iTunes. It would mean the world to us. Um, and give us any feedback that you have, episodes you might want to listen to, guests you'd want us to have on. We'll do our best to accommodate. Your feedback means everything to us.